I wanted to show you what the project is that I wanted to do with you today. Um, it is a yarn feather. I made this the other day and uh, it's just regular old yarn that's being used on this and a bead. Um, you can use any kind of yarn. Um, you could use macrame cord. You could use cotton cord uh, cording that you can get on Amazon um, or uh, at any craft store I imagine has it too. Um, you could maybe even use jute rope. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but you probably should be able to. So you will need your first string to be the length of your feather. Um, this is about a foot long. When you fold it in half, that is approximately the length of your feather that you want. So that is up to you exactly how long you want to make it. You will take your cord once it's split in half and make a small knot in the top. Just a little ways from the top just enough to make a loop, tiny little loop like that. And then you're gonna get your bead. Your bead is optional. You don't have to use a bead if you don't want to. It depends on what your, your project wants to be. Um, my beads, I just got a package of various beads uh, from Michaels here in Canada. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for this. I bought it a couple years ago. And uh, so I just uh, chose a bead in there that I wanted want to use. So I chose these ones. And you will take a needle. And I forgot to say to, that you'll need a needle with this. So I apologize for that. And put your yarn threads through the eye of your needle. and then through your bead. Pull it through. And then put another knot close to your bead. And that's just to hold your bead in place. Just like that. So I've got um, this foam board. It is for pinning um, my crochet projects to, to stretch them out. Uh, but you could very easily just take your yarn and tape it to a tabletop um, and to hold your yarn down. Um, my case, I'm just using a T-pin to hold my yarn down onto my board. So once that's on there, I will take my yarn that I have cut up. Um, again, how long you want your feathers is up to you. Um, this is going to be just one side of your feathers. And this is probably about, oh, I'd say probably about an eight inch long chunk of yarn. I didn't measure it. And you're gonna lay it underneath your yarn. And then take your second one. Again, fold it in half. And then loop it through the loop on the bottom there. Underneath that loop. And then loop it, the tail chunks through the other side. So it's over and under on each side. And then pull it tight. It will make a knot on there. Like that.
me just putting it back on my pin. And then we'll take the next two ropes. And I like to alternate which direction the top side of the knot goes on. So this first one I did, the knot is on the right side. So this one here, I will do it opposite. So I will lay this next one on top of the other two center cords. And fold this one in half. Go through the loops and then under the two center cords. And then through the tails. And again, pull tight. Once you got it somewhat tight, I just slide it up to be close to the next one. And pull it tight so that it stays on. So I believe the, the one feather that I did make the other day, um, I think I had about 28 of these ropes that I put together on there. So uh, again, it just depends on how long of uh, a feather you have. So this one's going underneath the two center ropes. And then the next one is going through that loop and then over the center cords and then through the tails on the left side. Again, pull it tight. I hope you can see this. This is a little, I got a little string there that's dark string that we don't want. Um, the next two cords. Okay, this one goes on top. Works right underneath. Fold it in half again. Go underneath the, the side loop and then over the center cords, and then through the tails. And pull it tight. Okay. On top. Oh, sorry, that's my dog barking. And then through the loop, under the main tail, and then through the left strings. And pull the knot tight and slide it up. So your ropes that you have, you can go with longer at the top and then narrower as you go down. So these next ones are a bit shorter. Right. 
So basically you're just pulling the, the tails through each loop on each side. Then pulling the knot tight on the center cords. I'm trying to put my knots, the top knots of the edges and the knots on alternating sides um, just to keep it uniform. But if you want to put them all on um, the top edges on one side, that's up to you. That's totally up to you how you want to do it. So we'll fold it in half. your tails through the loop and tails through the loop on the other side and pull. When you're pulling your cords make sure you pull on both sides evenly so that way um, that it doesn't twist and have uh, shorter any shorter ropes on one side or the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Fold it in half through the loop over the center posts and pull the little tails through and tighten. two. These are my medium cords that I'm using. Fold it in half. Through the loop. Over the cords. And through the tail. hope you all are having a good day. My day is going not too bad. It would have been nicer if I didn't have that Facebook issue, but it is what it is, eh? Kind of crazy. Okay, undo the remaining tails. Move the next one over. Through the loop. through the tails, tighten it up, and keep on doing this as we go down. Go underneath the tails, making sure that you keep your your remaining strings on the right or left side the same length as you work along. Uh, you don't want them going, getting uh, moved a bit and being really crooked. A little crooked is okay. And you don't have to be super picky about it, but just a little, uh, just so it doesn't go totally off. So my next ropes that I have are actually even shorter yet towards the bottom. So I'm about a third of the way each way I get uh, shorter chunks of rope just so I have less uh, less waste uh, at the end of the at the end of the project. Fold it half again. Through the loops, over the rope, center rope, and then through the tails. And pull your knots tight and even.
it's a fairly warm day here in uh, Alberta. I live uh, about 45 minutes uh, west of Edmonton. Um, and today here is uh, just uh, a little warmer over above freezing. So it's actually melting today, which is nice. I like these warmer temperatures. Uh, being only March, it can still be pretty temperamental here sometimes. Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's not. Okay, go under the center one. Fold in half, grab the second one. Through the loop. Over the center post. And through the tails on the opposite side. And pull it tight. Okay, so basically you're just going to put the yarn on at about a little over two-thirds of the length of the feather. Um, I'm going to add just one more set, just to be on the safe side. Any of you that uh, used to do um, macrame crafts back in the 80s might know this knot. Um, I know I did a bit of macrame when I was younger. And this is uh, just one of their basic knots that they use on that. <laughs> so, okay, and the last one I pulled tight. So this one I'm going to make sure I pull extra tight. And I think that's enough. So we got here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 of these ties on there. So then now that part is done. You can just take it off. And this is what it looks like so far. So the next step is trimming these so that they're even. Right now the top is uh, pretty um, long, so we're gonna trim it. Just make sure you can see this. Pull your strings so that they're all fairly straight by dragging your fingernails through it. And then taking your scissors and doing a slight arch up towards the top. And this is the leftover yarn. I keep a little bucket on my desk here for leftover yarns because I use the leftover chunks of yarn um, for stuffing on uh, some of my other projects because I don't like to waste. I usually try to reuse uh, various products on, on any crafts that I do. Um, so I'm always trying to come up with ideas. And we want to make sure they're about the same length on both sides. So I'm going to just take the right and left side and bring them up together. And make sure they're about the same length. And as you can see here, there is some that are a bit longer than the others. So I'm going to trim those ones. So they're all about the same length on the top. So now they're all the same length. So you can see that. Put it back on my pin. Lay them flat again. And now I can see if the, the top is a little bit longer on one side. The right side is, is my left side is, is good. 
my right side's a little bit too long, so I'm just going to do a slight trim again, just to even it all up. So that they're all the same. And run your fingers through a couple times because you'll notice after doing that a couple times that some there's the odd strand that shifts a little bit and might be a little bit longer. So you just got to do a little trim here and there to even it up. And once it's all done, that's what that looks like. So, depends on what kind of yarn you have. Um, you can just leave them with the full strings like this if you want. But in mine here, I decided to separate the three different strands just to make it a little softer. Another option you can have is taking a brush or comb and combing them. Um, this would work better, I think, on the cotton ones. Um, this is a, a polyester blend. Um, so it will just get all uh, pull apart and it won't do well with uh, brushing. So all I'm doing is just taking each individual strand and hold this up there. I'm taking each individual strand and splitting the three portions apart with my fingers. All the way down to the main shaft on each strand. So this will just take a few minutes to do um, and we'll just go along like that. Some people do use a comb for um, brushing them also if you want to really um, separate them. Um, that's up to you what you use. I just happen to have that um, hairbrush. So I used that. I tried using that on my other one, but it was just uh, making the, the strands really, uh, really, really frizzy. And almost pulling too much out so um, it wasn't a good option for for this type of yarn um, with the cotton uh, cords too uh, after you have brushed them out um, you can also use uh, an iron to flatten them out so that they're a little less uh, frizzy and fly away um, Again, that's up to you. If you want to use an iron to do that, that would be fine. Some people even use uh, a hair straightener iron. But with my uh, my lupus, <laughs> I don't have hair, so I don't have any uh, hair straightening irons. Uh, so yeah, I'd have I just use uh, a regular clothes iron to do that. I'm just doing one strand at a time, going down as I go. Doing each one. As we go down. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. I did message Facebook to see if I can contest the restriction. Wasn't too worried about it because it was just on my main account at first. And I thought, oh, I'll just wait till the, the deadline's done. Because I know getting a hold of Facebook for some of that stuff can take forever. Uh, but I just found out today that they were restricting my second account. And I'm all sure 
account too so it was like oh no it's almost like they knew I was gonna go live today you know it's crazy I'm in my uh, crafting room today. Um, my other live that I had a while ago, I did it in the kitchen. Um, I was a little worried about um, my Wi-Fi reaching back here uh, as good as it should. So today was going to be kind of just to see how that would go with the Wi-Fi until Facebook derailed me. <laughs> Oh well, hopefully I can get that restriction taken off soon, but I'm not, I might just have to wait out the days until it's done. So, got to be so careful what you say on, on here, I guess. I know I'm going to be more careful from now on. As Canadians, we always like saying our please and thank you and watching our manners. Obviously, I was not being careful enough. <laughs> eh? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I say A, eh, but some people say I do. <laughs> uh, kind of funny. You know, some of the people that I follow in the States... They have such a different accents. Just depends on where they're from. It's amazing how the accents can be different for every area. I think my favorite is uh, accent is <clears throat> Debbie with uh, Cruises Creations. Uh, she's got an accent. Her accent sounds like uh, she reminds me of Dolly Parton. <laughs> I love her her accent. Okay, so I got that one side all separated. And as you can see, this is the side I separated and this is the side I didn't. So that's why um, so you can kind of decide whether what look you want with yours. A little more frizzy or a little more raggedy. Pardon me. <clears throat> have to pardon me with my uh, lupus. My nose always runs. Um, lupus um, is a, a condition where your immune system is overreactive. Um, it, your immune system is normally just there to attack any viruses or foreign bodies that it comes into your body. Uh, but with lupus, your immune system overreacts. It takes a look at healthy parts of your body and says, oh, I gotta attack that. So in my case, my immunity attacks my hair, my skin, um, my eyes, and that's why I have no hair. Uh, I've had no hair for about 10 years now. I do have a little bit of hair in the very back, but not very much. I probably only have about a quarter of my hair now. And the, the bits I do have, it's uh, really patchy. But I'm okay with that now. It took me a couple of years to feeling a little self-conscious, but I'm more, I feel better now that I, that I shaved the remaining off. Um, I know the first while I wore wigs all the time and, uh, but I didn't, I don't really like wigs. Um, I find they're really itchy. It's like wearing wool on your head. Uh, it's okay for the first little while, but after a while I start scratching and scratching and it's like, oh, driving me nuts. So, 
So generally I only wear wigs um, if uh, I'm going out for a nice dinner or at a, at a uh, social gathering, a fancier social, social gathering. Generally I go without or I wear a scarf or a hat. I got lots of hats and I got lots of scarves. Um, I actually just bought this scarf at Dollar Tree. Um, we don't have a whole lot of Dollar Trees here. We have a dollar store here. It's called Dollarama. Uh, Dollarama, I'm going to guess it's a Canadian store. I know there's a lot more um, Dollaramas here than Dollar Trees. Dollar Trees, there's probably only, I don't know, four or five in Edmonton. And uh, Dollaramas, there's probably 20. So... I uh, tend to shop more at Dollaramas just because there's more around. But they're quite similar to Dollar Trees. Um, just a little bit different. Um, I know some people will go live uh, on some other crafting pages uh, shopping at their local thrift stores and dollar stores. I might uh, take you one day if, if you guys are interested to Dollarama and uh, so you can see the difference between your guys' dollar stores and our dollar stores. Um, so yeah, that would be kind of fun, I thought. Maybe if you guys are interested, I'm not sure. Well, about three quarters done this side. Ooh, my furnace is running. I'm getting hot. This back bedroom is really warm. I tried closing some of the, the heat duct off on this room, but it's still too warm. Whew. I did turn the heat down before I started this, but I'm getting warm right now. And it's not even hot flash. <laughs> I do get some of those now, though. 51 years old now and lupus makes me fevered quite often too so sometimes I'm cold sometimes I'm hot but I notice I'm getting more hot ones now so it must be my hormones I presume oh, good old getting older <laughs> okay so I think I got them all so I'm just gonna sure I catch them all flip it over backwards because I know last time I did this with the other one when I flipped it over I found oh I missed a few on the other one so make sure all your knots are nice and tight too so just give them a little tug again because you don't want any of those coming out oh yeah and I did this one see mm -hmm. Just pull all the knots tight. Make sure they stay in place. Okay. One more I missed there. third one I missed. <laughs> like I said, take a good look at it. You'll see the odd one that you missed here and there. Okay, and separate your left and right ones.
And there we go. All done. So if you want to, you can brush it, like I said. Um, I'll brush just a little bit here and you'll see what I mean. So when you brush it, the yarn, it gets really, really fine. So if you want that look, you can. Um, I decided I kind of want this frazzled look without that. And then you'll also see that it's left a whole bunch of the hair off the side there. So I'm going to just turn that off. I don't want mine quite that frizzy, um, but if you want, you can. Um, that's up to you. So there we go. So now your feathers can be used for whatever project you have in mind. Um, like I said, you can do this in any color, um, any size. Imagine the smaller you do this, the little trickier it is, but it's still doable. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped you. And um, I'll keep you posted when my Facebook restriction is done. And I will try to do an actual live then. Um, I think it's another 10 days, if I remember right, that's left on my restriction. I'll have to double check. So, yeah, I'm trying to uh, contest it with Facebook, but from what I hear, doing that doesn't work very well. So I might just have to wait out the restriction. So I hope this, uh, this video helps you, and uh, I hope... Uh, you enjoyed it and I apologize again for not going live earlier I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out what was wrong and then I, it finally uh, told me that it had restricted my Boncherie account now too so crazy so anyways I hope you have a good evening and uh, take care and don't forget to be nice to others. Uh, it, in this crazy world that we're living in nowadays, um, there's so much negativity and just people just unhappy. And if you can do something kind for someone other person, please do that. Because you know what? It really does make a difference for someone else, especially if they're having a bad day. So be kind and take care. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.